maybe a dark question, but um, has there been a, a difficult time in your life, a really dark place you've gone in your mind um, that stands out that you had to really overcome? I would suggest that I've been a uh, pretty firm ground for most of my life. I haven't had too many personal tragedies, I'll say, that have really defined me. Um, certainly none that I would think are outside the norm. So there is no truly low point. Actually, I have one. And it's tough for me because I, you know, I've spent most of my life beating motions and, and you know, uh, high, high emotional responses out of my system, right? Because that's what flying is, right? It's keeping a steady line and, and doing what you need to do. Um, in fact, there's been studies that shown reduced uh, um, adrenaline production in fighter pilots for a number of years after they get out. But getting out of the Navy was difficult for me, you know, it, and I wasn't expecting it to be. A lot of bravado and machoism, of course, in the military, uh, especially in the fighter community. Uh, and we all have our plans made up to get out. And none of it really um, accounts for any type of mental health or anything like that. It's all very much, where am I going to get my paycheck from? Where am I going to move to? And you know, whether it's the Navy or just individuals, truly understanding the difference that makes. And when I got out, it was, it was difficult for me. I, you know, I think a lot of guys in that job, when they get out, they almost, at least I, I had anxiety when I got out because it was, I was so used to being highly involved in something that, um, that, you know, just was, I was always involved with that when I got out, I didn't know how to fill that space essentially, you know, um, and while I wouldn't say it was an overly traumatic experience, I think it's one that's not accounted for enough that people that are getting out, you know, so I would encourage them to, to take it serious and actually think about it and have, respect the change because it, it is a big one. Well, if I may say, you found a, a place in nature currently, a home. Is there, uh, can you speak to that being a source of happiness for you? Absolutely. An escape from the world? Certainly, and it very much is. Was it deliberate that you found it there? That's home for me. So, you know, I moved back up to the, the Boston area and my wife and I had an idea after moving about eight or nine times in the Navy of kind of what we what we wanted just generally. And it was all really about the land and not about the house. You know, we just wanted privacy and to be nearby. And so we ended up finding a lot of land, you know, a parcel of land. We put a house on it and it provides me with a sense of peace that um, I think I can only get when I'm in nature a sense of clarity that helps me think, helps me relax. Maybe it's so relaxing that helps me think, I don't know. But being surrounded by nature and birds and animals for, for me has always um, allowed me to, I don't know, feel most in touch with, with my own thoughts in a sense. It just provides clarity. And so this little sanctuary you could say I've built allows me to to you know, interface via a fiber line at my house, but also feel like I'm a million miles away sometimes, which is the best of both worlds. Yeah, you can just walk outside to escape it all. Yes. To experience life as, as uh, hundreds of generations of human species have experienced it. Maybe it's the dichotomy, my desire for the vastness of technology and experience compared with the most basic baseline that we have. Isn't that strange? How do you, how do you square that? I don't your know. draw, how drawn you are to the cutting edge and still the calm you find in nature. I think it makes sense. Nature is vastly superior to almost all of our technology. From a technology perspective. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and so in a way it's being surrounded by perfection in a lot of senses. In the military and in general, have you contemplated your mortality? Have you been afraid of death? What was What's your relationship like with death? I was willing to accept an oversized amount of risk, I'll say, when I was younger as an aviator. Yeah. Not not in the jet, but just that was my life. You know, I felt like I was gonna live forever. Um, and going out in the war, you know, strangely didn't really change that because, you know, as an aviator, again, we're riding up high on our horse up there. So there were times when I was in situations that could have resulted in death from, from flying or from emergency um, in the aircraft. But I'll be honest, I never, really kind of sat down to think about the moral, the mortality of it afterwards. I feel like I kind of signed a check at the beginning and it was my job to perform as well as I could. And if something happened in that, then I better damn well be sure I would do my best at the time then. Um, so, you know, I I've maybe didn't personally reflect on it as much as of it. I 
one would think, you know, because once you get in that machine, it doesn't give you a lot of time to sit back and philosophize on, on your current situation. We weren't necessarily, you know, examining them every day, right? We'd put them into that bucket because it wasn't something that was going to kill us right away. Um, and thinking about death when you're so close to it all the time would be debilitating. It would probably make you worse at your job. It would. Well, maybe you can think about death when you look out, when you go out into nature and think like the, the, the fact that this whole ride ends, it's a, such a weird thing. And the, the old makes way to new. And that's all throughout nature. And if you just look at the, the cruelty of nature or the beauty of nature, however you think about it, the, the fact that the, the big thing eats the little thing <laughs> over and over, um, and that's just how it progresses. And that's how adaptation happens. Death is a requirement for uh, evolution. And you know whether evolution allows us to see objective reality or not, uh, it still gives you some interesting thoughts about perspectives of death, and it, especially considering it's a biological necessity as far as evolution is concerned. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird that uh, there's, there's been like a hundred billion people that lived before us, and that you and I will be forgotten. This whole thing we're doing right now is, is meaningless in that sense, but that at the same time, it feels deeply meaningful somehow. Um, I guess that that's the question I want to ask. When you go out to nature, family, what do you think is the meaning of it all? What's the meaning of life? Or maybe when you put on the night goggles, the, the night vision goggles and look up at the stars, why are we here? I can't speak for everyone, but at least the way I interpret it, you know, or at least I, I feel like I interpret my way here. My job is, I feel like my role is just to be curious about the environment in a manner that allows us to understand as much as possible. I think that the human mind, whether it's just the mass inside our skull or you know whether there's some type of quantum interactions going on, our mind is an incredible has incredible ability to output new information in in a universe that you know somewhat stale of information, right? Um, our our minds are in some somewhat unique in that we can imagine and perceive things that could never ever have possibly naturally occurred, and yet we can make it happen. We can instantiate that with enough belief that it's true and it can happen. And so for me, I feel like I just need to encourage that, to encourage, you know, interaction with reality such that it leads us to newer and grander, you know, interactions with this universe. And all that starts with a little bit of curiosity. Exactly. Ryan, you're an incredible person. <laughs> uh, you've done so many things and there's so much still, uh, still ahead of you. Thank you for being brave enough to talk about UFOs. Um, and doing it so seriously. And thank you for pushing forward on all these fronts in terms of technology. So from um, just the fighter jets, the, the, the engineering of that, to the AI ML applications in the combat setting, that's super interesting. And then now quantum, I can't wait to see, to see what you do next. Thank you so much for sitting down and talking today. It was an honor. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Lex. Thanks for listening to this conversation with Lieutenant Ryan Graves. To support this podcast, please check out our sponsors in the description. And now, let me leave you with some words from Buzz Aldrin. Bravery comes along as a gradual accumulation of discipline. Thank you for listening and hope to see you next time.